In 2020, the world has seen a dramatic drop in flu cases due to COVID-19 restrictions. This year, the flu is back, and first reports about flu and COVID-19 co-infections have surfaced. These co-infections are also named Fluorona, but what does Fluorona actually mean for us? Does Fluorona impact the COVID-19 pandemic? My name is Kevin Steinig, and today we'll see how SARS-CoV-2 might go hand-in-hand -hand with other viruses. <music> In February 2020, a man in New York was admitted to the hospital. He suffered a terrible cough and fever. This was back in the days when COVID-19 was not as widespread and so his doctors conducted standard tests. Shortly afterwards, they found out that the man contracted the flu. He then told the doctors that he had been to a conference nearby. The doctors became suspicious and conducted further tests. When the results came in, the doctors were surprised. The man suffered from the flu and COVID-19. The flu is an infectious disease, which is caused by the influenza virus. COVID-19 is a current pandemic, which is caused by SARS-CoV-2. If the influenza virus and SARS-CoV-2 infect the same person at the same time, we call this fluorona. So fluorona is not a new variant like Delta or Omicron, it just means that we have two viruses in the body at the same time. You see, the conference the man attended was crowded and people came from all over the world. So he probably was exposed to the influenza virus and SARS-CoV-2 there. Both viruses entered his body independently and started to infect the upper respiratory tract. His immune system detected both infections and started to fight the influenza virus and SARS-CoV-2. And this led to his fever and cough. Since COVID-19 and the flu have similar symptoms, fluorona patients might further suffer from shortness of breath, headache or a sore throat. We do not really know if fluorona has any other special unique symptoms since it has been rare so far. Fortunately, the doctors realized what was going on and treated the man accordingly. He regained his health and after a couple of days was discharged from the hospital. But since the flu has a comeback now, we expect more fluorona cases. In December 2021, a pregnant woman in Israel was diagnosed with COVID-19 and the flu. Also in this case, the woman was treated accordingly, but what can we expect from fluorona? In a study a couple of weeks ago, it was shown that mice which carry the influenza virus and SARS-CoV-2 develop more serious lung infections compared to mice which were infected with SARS-CoV-2 alone. In this study, it was not only noted that the COVID-19 infection itself is more serious, but also that the influenza virus actively boosts the activity of SARS-CoV-2. In humans, we do not know too much about fluorona yet, but we know how other bacteria and viruses impact COVID-19 infections. While one meta study says that as many as 19% of COVID-19 patients have co-infections, another study suggests that the number is 7%. But again, we now mean all kinds of different bacteria and viruses, not influenza and COVID-19 alone. Some estimations say that half of all COVID-19 deaths can be associated with co-infections. Other studies have put the number lower, but a meta-analysis has concluded that co-infections might increase the risk of dying threefold. There are several reasons why COVID-19 with co-infections can be so detrimental. The first thing that might happen is that the infected tissues become more damaged. If a cell becomes infected with a virus, the cell is often destroyed at some point. Immune cells then detect the destroyed cells and cause inflammation to attract other immune cells. With combined forces, the immune system then detects and destroys all viral particles. In this process, however, some surrounding tissues are also damaged by the virus or the immune system. If not only SARS-CoV-2, but also let's say another virus infects the same tissue, then we might have more viral particles and overall more active immune cells. And this then might further damage the body. Alternatively, the body might be weakened by a COVID-19 infection and then a second virus can cause a super infection. Super infection means that we first have one infection, which then enables another severe infection afterwards. In other words, COVID-19 might damage the respiratory tract, which then helps other viruses to get inside the body. It is estimated that over 40% of COVID-19 patients in the ICU have super infections, which increase the risk of dying. And then there is an issue with COVID-19 treatments. Treatments which are required for serious COVID-19 cases also make the patient more susceptible to acquire other infections. So this is what we know so far, but I also want to emphasize that not all co-infections make the prognosis of a COVID-19 patient worse. One of the reasons of this phenomenon is that viruses might have to compete with each other if they infect the same cells. But concerning SARS-CoV-2 influenza co-infections, we do not have enough data to know if fluorona is more serious than COVID-19, but a few cases we have could suggest that we do not have more severe symptoms. Yeah, biology is complicated.
Now that we know that COVID-19 can go hand in hand with other infections, there is one question. Some of you have actually asked that on my HIV video series. Is it possible that SARS-CoV-2 merges with other viruses to make a new virus? And the simple answer is no. Here's why. Let's take three viruses. The herpes simplex virus, HIV and the influenza virus and let's see if they could theoretically merge with SARS-CoV-2. In order for two viruses to merge, they need to be able to do the following. They need to infect the same species and invade the same cells. Then the viruses need to have a similar life cycle, meaning that they need to do similar stuff. And then they need to be able to exchange genetic information. And here is the issue. Viruses can be very different from each other. Let's start with the herpes simplex virus. If someone who catches COVID-19 gets some smooches and becomes infected with herpes, SARS-CoV-2 and herpes simplex might end up in the same tissue. But the genetic information is stored differently. While SARS-CoV-2 stores its genetic information in the form of RNA, the herpes simplex virus uses DNA. So they cannot exchange genetic information. And that's number one. HIV infects a subset of immune cells and not the respiratory tract, which means that HIV and SARS-CoV-2 cannot meet in the same cell. HIV also has a different life cycle where it makes a DNA version of its genetic information and integrates it into the DNA of the host cell. And then there is the influenza virus. SARS-CoV-2 and the influenza virus both infect the same tissues. So technically speaking, they could end up in the same cells of a fluorona patient. Influenza is also an RNA virus and it doesn't have any additional fancy steps in its life cycle. But there is one last issue which makes the SARS-CoV-2 influenza hybrid and nearly all other hybrids impossible. The exchange genetic information needs to be highly similar in order to build a proper virus. Just to show you what I mean, a small experiment. I downloaded the genetic information of the Delta variant, the Omicron variant and a part of the influenza virus from this database here. If I try to align the genetic information of Delta and Omicron, I get over 99% similarity. But Omicron and the influenza virus just gives me error messages. And one of the consequences of the vast differences between unrelated viruses is that viruses cannot build stable symmetrical viral particles. It's like back in school with Yu-Gi-Oh. If you and your buddy want to trade Yu-Gi-Oh cards, they should be similar in their value. The influenza virus or any other unrelated virus would be like a weird kid who wants to get your Yu-Gi-Oh cards by trading them with some vegetables he got for lunch. Co-infections with other viruses or bacteria make COVID-19 infections more unpredictable. I do not expect that we now have a full-fetched fluorona wave. But in some cases it might break out and it's important for doctors to know because they want to treat the patient accordingly. If a COVID-19 patient also has the flu then we might like to give him Tamiflu additionally. But as we've seen we do not need to worry about any Frankenstein super viruses. And by the way, fluorona sounds so ridiculous, I wonder who came up with this name? Tony, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt just became a couple and we need a name for them. Huh, a new name? Time to shine. Oh, hi Jeff. Let's call them Brangelina. Wow, great work Jeff. Kanye West and Kim Kardashian are dating and they need to have a couple name. Kim Ye. Wow, great work Jeff. I had to switch professions but no one who reports on serious medical topics will steal the spotlight. Tony, you have a new partner and people suffer from the flu and COVID-19 at the same time and we need a name for that. No, don't say it, Fluorona. Ah, damn. And at the end I also want to make a short announcement. I want to rename my channel in a couple of weeks. So instead of Life at Learner, I will rename the channel to Sincerely. I hope that you like the new name, but I think probably that most of you do not really care about that. The content stays the same. So yeah, I hope that you liked this video and if so, feel free to like and comment and do all the other great YouTube stuff in order to feed the algorithm. And with that, I'll see ya. Omicron is here, but how does it change the pandemic? Click here to find the answer. If you want to know about brain parasites which live in millions of people, you might like this video.